Hey guys, thanks for joining us again for another one of our BFT tech videos. Uh, today we're going to be going over the Juno BT A50 slash A20 um, and the Talia P control board. Of course, this is uh, from our Talia line of control boards. Um, you know, the first thing I would like to go over before we even get started, of course, would be um, your geometry, right? So you got to mount this thing first before you move it. So, of course, um, you ever call into us and you're asking about geometry, you're going to hear, you know, 7x7 seven seven and 51, and that's specifically speaking of the A50. So let me explain more or less what I'm talking about. So we're standing on the inside of the property, looking out, right? So we're on, this is the right side gate, and it's going to open in, right? Open in, and then closes this way, right? So on the inside of the property. So now we're looking at the gate hinge right here. So this is the hinge of the gate. You're gonna measure out seven inches and then you're gonna measure over seven inches, like an L bracket, right? So from the hinge out seven, then over seven, that is where the pin of your butt should be of the motor. Okay, and then once you have this set, you just measure in the closed position, you're gonna measure 51 inches out that way uh, over to the gate post and that is where your gate post would go. All right, now let's say you have the A20 it would be four and a half by five and a half and then 41 inches, all right? Same setup, same scenario, but those would be the, your optimal different uh, geometries, you know, to give this guy the most leverage he needs for your heavy gates, right? So that, of course, is step one. So we wanna make sure that is done correctly. Then, of course, the next step is wiring. Uh, and one of the a quick tip I can give you for wiring is please do not go under 16 gauge cable, right? So 16 gauge should be your thinnest cable that you use on this, and of course, direct burial. Uh, and try to stay away from junction boxes. I know that's impossible sometimes, but you know, only if you can. So of course on A20 or A50, you're gonna have going from left to right, one, two, three, four. First one being red, second one being black, third one being green, and of course the fourth one being white. right so now you would of course wire this over to your control board you know for one motor operation you're gonna have your red going to 10 your black going to 11 your green going to 40 and your white going to 42 now let's say you had two motors same connections on the back you would have your red going to 14 your black going to 15 uh, you would be sharing a green in 40 and then your 43 would be your white for your motor to limit switch all right so that is important so we're chopping away everything seems to be working all right uh the next thing you're going to want to do of course especially if you have our tally ul uh would be to make sure your photo beams are wired correctly now check the link out on top it'll take you uh to the correct wiring if not you're going to continually get er01 or er04 all right geometry is good wiring is good photo beams in uh the next thing we would want to do of course is go to the quick setup all right, so you got three buttons here. The top one is plus, middle one is minus, and the bottom one is OK. So the first thing you're going to want to do, push OK one time. It's going to say language, and then, of course, you're going to see English. Push OK for English, and it's going to say motor type. Uh, all of our Talia lines actually have a lot of different motors you can use, but, of course, today we're going to use uh, the Juno. Number of motors, one or two. We're going to select one. Direction. All right. So EXT, that is actually push to open. And INT is normally what everybody uses. That would be pull to open. For demo purposes, I'll choose EXT. Then it takes us to our presets. This is like a pre, uh, quick menu of you know automatic residential or, or semi-residential. So one of them is close automatically. The other one would be push to open, push to close. Uh, of course, there's another one I want to bring up. It's called IND. Uh, sometimes people choose that by accident. It's actually a dead man switch. So you got to make sure you stay away from that. If not, you got to wire in a push button to hold constantly for the motor to run. All right, so for demo purposes, we will go to AR. Push OK. All right. So we got all the presets selected for the motor. So now the next step, of course, would be to get your limit switches done right. All right. So this part is important. Um, you have four limit switches. You have a stop limit right here under this plastic. You would, there's two screws here on the side for you to be able to remove this plastic piece. You have a stop limit, a slowdown limit, the limit sense assembly, a slowdown limit, and a stop limit, right? So as this shaft moves, the magnet connected on the tip of the magnet will move also, 
So anytime the magnet gets near one of these limit switches, the light's going to go off. So right now, of course, it's in the closed position over one of these limit switches. So at this point, you would take your manual release key. Remember, your, your motor is connected to the gate. You're going to take your manual release key, open your manual release, and then you're going to push the gate open and close. And you'll notice the light turning on and off. So you're going to want to adjust your stop limits to exactly where you want. And here comes the important tip, and you got to follow this for sure. Your slowdown limits should not be closer than half an inch or three quarter inch to your stop limits. So I know a lot of people want to push it close, but if you get it too close, you're going to get error 20s and you're going to get, uh, sometimes it'll just slow down and never stop. So very important. And also uh, you want to make sure your slowdown limits aren't too close to this. If you are too far this way or you are too close to this, check your geometry. Again, check the BFT Easy Set app. Uh, make sure everything's okay because you know, the closer, if you're too close to this, you'll get the same issues. All right. Um, so that's important. We've got our limit switches. We've got everything set up. So you're going to push it to the closed position then you're going to lock it back in. Once you have it locked back in, we can go to the auto set. Push OK. It says auto set. Push OK. It'll count down. Three, two, one. It'll start running. You know, for first time uh, motor installations, it'll run full open and close three or four times. So just let it do its thing uh, and try your best not to get in the way of the photo beams or anything like that because now you got to start over again and go to the quick setup. Um, you know, uh, again, another thing I could bring up is, you know, it went from us to a distributor, from a distributor over to you. A lot of times right now it could sound like it might have air in the motor. So after it finishes its auto set, you can actually run the motor fully open, open the manual release valve, close the manual release valve, run it fully closed, open the manual release valve, close the manual release valve, and just do that up to eight times and that should be able to bleed the system of any air that could be in there. And of course, oh yeah, another thing, when you guys took these screws off, you notice there's a valve here and a valve there. Those are your blocking valves. You have no reason to touch those. Stay away from those. Uh, those things only turn like quarter turn at a time. So if you overturn it, you can mess it up. You know, there's no need to touch them. They all come in the closed position. If you need to move anything, just mess with your uh, manual release valve. All right, so everything came out okay. We got an okay on the screen. So now it's gonna take us to remote programming. Uh, it'll actually stay here until you're done. Let's say you have a lot of remotes. This is a commercial place. You can just keep knocking them out uh, and get them done. Um, so, you know, right now you could also check out my video on how to program these manually. A couple other little uh, things you can do with it as well. Um, but for the most part, you wanna get to your hidden button and you wanna get a delayed light. So you squeeze both buttons, delay, light, should say release, let go, quick tap, and you notice I got an OK and a number. Uh, so that is a good sign. OK and a number means it programmed. If I have more, I could just keep going up to 63. If not, I just push OK. And and C. So if you see C, that means it's one motor in the closed position. CC would be two motors. O or OO would be in the open position. All right, let's see how we did. All right, not bad. Thank you for joining me.